Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are going to start a series of tutorials about the score manager, managing the score manager. Uh, for this first tutorial, this is just a basic thing. I'm, I am going to uh, touch on the setup wizard as well, and, as well, and that's the first thing we're going to do. So we're going to open Finale from scratch today. And when you do that, the launch window will appear, usually in the center of the screen. And uh, from the launch window, if by the way, if you're not, uh, if your finale is already open, you can get to the launch window f from the file menu right there. Uh, and in the launch window, you'll see setup wizard, templates, that'll open a file from a template. Default document will just open a blank file with one staff on it. Uh, there's an exercise wizard, which is, I think, is, sim is similar to the setup wizard. Um, you can open files, you can open recent files and import music XML. And by the way, in that first video, I mentioned all those, uh, uh, the quick start and the user manual and the tutorials and everything. You can access them here in the launch window as well. But today we're going to go through the setup wizard. Now, uh, Finale tends to not be user friendly all the time, but I will say that the setup wizard is perhaps the most user friendly thing in Finale. So uh, it is, um, it's useful at times. So in the first uh, part of this, uh, setup wizard, um, you'll get things like uh, the score page, uh, part page, and you can set this to whatever you need to. We'll just keep it at 8.5 by 11 for now. And uh, you can select an ensemble. Let's say we're going to do a string quartet today. And in this right panel, we can select a document style, and there's handwritten styles. There's, there's some other specific uh, styles that would um, be useful for certain things. So let's just say we're going to go to orchestra, orchestra engraver style. Uh, the engraver font is uh, happens to be the font that I like to use in my personal template, and it'll give you some other information about the uh, the the document style to the right here. Okay, so we've selected string quartet, orchestra engraver. Hit next. Now in the next window, we'll see the instruments, and you see you've got your two violins, your viola and cello. And <coughs> over here on the left side, it will allow you to add some other instruments. So let's just say, you know what? It's not a string quartet. It's a string quintet. And I'm going to add a double bass. It's one of those string quintets with a double bass. And we'll do that in the score order. You know, obviously we want the orchestral. Um, and this add and remove, by the way, if you just d change your mind, remove, add, and uh, we can save this current ensemble. We wouldn't want to do that because then s our string quartet would have five instruments. W or we could save it as a new ensemble if we'd like. But we'll skip that for now. Click Next. Do we want to save changes to string quartet? No. OK, now we have an opportunity to enter our title. So I'm going to call this my string quintet. Subtitle, it's very good. Composer. Me, arranger, also, <laughs> I almost typed me, also Jason Lafredo, lyricist, there are no lyrics, copyright, whatever, who cares, cool, so we hit next, now we have an opportunity to choose our time signature. We'll say it's in 3-4, and I'm writing my string quintet in E major. And yes, I'm going to specify an initial tempo marking of molto allegro, because this is going to be a fast string quartet. And the quarter note is going to be 185. And if I wanted to, I could specify pickup measure. Just select the rhythmic value of the pickup measure that you would like. But yeah, I don't want that. And let's say. My uh, string quintet is going to be 142 measures long, because why not? Click Finish, and there it is. And Finale always puts that first system a little bit too high. All right, so you've got, you're all set up. You've got your string quintet score, and you can get to your parts here nice and easily. So the setup wizard is really quick and easy. I did that in like four minutes. Um, pretty easy to set up a score that way. Um, now that we have this, I'm going to take you through the first part of the score manager. And to get there, you go to Window, Score Manager, or Command K. Okay, and you'll see that the score manager is divided into two sections the file info on the left and the instrument list on the right. Now, the instrument list is a very important um, 
uh, function in, in uh, setting up Finale, and I'm going to get to that in the next uh, set of videos. But uh, for today, we're just going to look at the file info. Now, you notice that there's all these fields here, the title, subtitle, composer, arranger, lyricist, copyright, and description, which Finale has, helpfully or not, just kind of put in a description from the setup wizard, so we can delete that. And we also have the uh, what we want to call wh what we're going to call the the full score. Sometimes you call it full score. Sometimes we'll just say score, right? And you can see that it changes it up there. And um, and you can see that it th it populates the uh, the the score. Now all of those uh, fields that I just showed you in the score manager um, will populate certain. Um, aspects of these text blocks. Now, if I go to the text tool and I double click, you'll see. Oh, look at I called it Quintet. How about that? Nobody caught that. That bugs me. I'll change that. Quintet. There we go. And it updates it. Um, if we double click here, you'll notice something. That if I if I start typing my name, for example, you notice that. Uh, there's a little gray highlight right here, and there's not gray highlight right here. So the not where it's not gray, this is normal text. This, however, where it's grayed out is what what's called a token. And specifically, if we go into the text menu, it is the um, the title token. So if you go to insert, all of this down here are those tokens. So this title, subtitle, composer, arranger, lyricist, copyright text, and description all of those things are uh, calling back to that information in the the score manager okay so this is kind of important information to now have so basically what I've highlighted here I've highlighted the title but if I you know if I went into here insert oops and I put the subtitle it would change that now that's the subtitle that we typed in right obviously that's not what we want so we can go back and insert the title again, okay? Uh, did I do it? Let's try that again. Insert title. Wait. Oh, there we go. Um, and you'll notice that the finale in this uh, setup wizard only put the composer's name here, which makes sense. But if we wanted to, we could enter this uh, text block and we could insert the arranger which I had typed as also Jason Lafredo. I go down to the next line and we can insert the lyricist. There are no lyrics, right? So that's basically how the, uh, the, the, the basic function of the score manager. Now these, uh, these, um, these tokens, as, they are, as they're called, are, are useful in a lot of ways. For example, you know, even in this score, see, you know, you have y the title here, My String Quintet. It also appears here. So instead of having to type my string quintet here and then having to type it here, you know, you can change it once. My blue, let's call it my blue string quintet. It'll change it here and here. Uh, so that's, you know, the usefulness of the token. This is something that's not entirely unfamiliar if you with uh, or, or not entirely um, foreign to certain... Um, computer programs. Um, so basically that's the score manager. I'll get into more stuff with the text tool and how to insert things. There's also other other types of stuff that you can insert certain uh, characters and page numbers and total pages and file names and stuff like that. Um, but we will talk about that later. The, m the, m the important thing as it relates to the score manager are those specific inserts, okay? Uh, just looking around this window, there's only this other thing on the, the on the right hand side, the created and last modified. These, this is just internal information. You know, we put this, uh, I'm the one that started the file, let's say somebody in whose initials is MG was working on it today. And uh, once you save it, then then it'll show up that MG was the last person working on it. This information literally goes nowhere else except the score manager. So it's kind of a, a good thing for, you know, internal use only if you're working with a, a team of copyists or something. And then the the last thing within uh, the score manager, uh, the score manager on the left side is the file statistics. And this is, you know, to tell you how many pages, staff systems, how many measures, and the actives active frames and non whole rest active frames if there were uh, notes within these measures you know th th those those numbers would be more than zero 
And uh, this is useful sometimes for uh, billing. Copyists sometimes use active frames as a, as a way of billing, you know, s a certain cost per active frame. So it's an easy way to pull that information up without actually having to go through the score and, you know, counting the active frames. Um, so that is the left half of the score manager, the file info. All right, so uh, that's all I have for this. Uh, come back to the next video, and we're going to start to dive into the instrument list half of the score manager. Uh, thanks for listening, and see you soon.